change the editor types so a lot of manipulation and a lot of options to set up the screen arrangement that best suits the work you're doing okay so i'm just going to come back to the default view okay and that's going to do it for this one so thanks for watching goodbye okay so let's just take a look at the 3d view and just some simple navigation and some selection if i press the left mouse button while i'm hovering over this camera you can see i can select it now it's important to have set up the interface in a previous tutorial i showed you how to go to file user preferences and enable some add-ons and we change some settings in the input tab and the most important one here is the left select with the mouse button okay blender's default is right i'll be using left for these lectures so it's important to have this set up like this just so you can follow along and also emulate numpad if you have a keyboard that doesn't have a numpad putting a check mark here allows you to use the numbers across the top of your keyboard okay and that just enables you to switch between the different views so front top view side view etc okay and with that done you can just save user settings okay and x that down so that's left select with the mouse button so if i hover the mouse i can left click and select this cube okay i can do the same thing with the light in the scene so if i press the right mouse button it places the cursor at that particular point okay and that's that's very useful if you want to insert different objects into a scene so for example if i press shift a I can choose maybe another cube okay the cube comes in at the position of the 3d cursor okay and if i select this cube and press g for example g is for is for translate or move okay i can right click and that snaps it back or cancels the operation okay so that's just really the difference between the left mouse button and the right mouse button left will select an object okay right will place the 3d cursor or it will cancel an operation and if i press the middle mouse button i can rotate around in the 3d view okay it's very important to have a three button mouse when you're using blender okay if you roll the mouse wheel you can zoom in and out okay and they're just the basic controls in blender when you're navigating the 3d view but very important because there's something you're going to be using continuously throughout this course okay and that's going to do it for this one so i'm just going to have a quick look at the different modes within blender and blender uses modes just to separate the different functions so blender is always in one of these modes depending on which one you choose so each of these modes has a specific purpose that allows you to edit the selected object and the default mode and the current mode that blender begins in is object mode now object mode allows you to add new objects okay so i can just right click place the cursor out there press shift a and i can add a i'm just going to choose a uv sphere now this object is added to object mode it's separate from this cube that's in the scene okay and in object mode we can join objects together so if i press and hold shift select the cube i can press ctrl j and that joins both of these objects and they're now one object okay, you can also add them to groups if you have a, a larger project okay groups are a good way of managing the different sets of objects in the scene okay i'm just going to delete both of these objects okay and i'm just going to put the cursor back at the center so shift s cursor to center okay that just puts the 3d cursor back and i'm just going to press shift a and i'm just going to add another cube and the other mode i want to look at is edit mode and it's where all the modeling takes place if i press tab Okay, it brings me up the mode menu and this displays the different modes so we have so we have texture paint mode object mode vertex paint sculpt weight paint and edit mode okay and just for 
this tutorial I'll just be concerned with edit and object I'm just gonna right click for a second and let's come down here to this option okay if I click here we have exactly the same menu if by any chance when you press tab you don't get this menu just make sure you come up here to file user preferences under add-ons I'm just going to come down here to Pi menu official okay so this is the shortcut key make sure that one is enabled and click save user settings okay if you don't have that enabled you won't get the quick access menu okay it's going to X that down okay I'm just going to add another object I'm just going to right click over here shift a and I'm just going to add a UV sphere again okay I'm going to select the cube and press tab and come into edit mode okay now edit mode allows us to modify the geometry of the mesh without affecting the global properties of the object that that is the location rotation etc in edit mode with this cube I cannot select other objects in the scene so I cannot select that UV sphere okay that's an individual object same thing with the camera we, we have no access to other objects so we're so we're basically in edit mode with the cube to edit it okay to exit all we have to do is press tab and come back to object mode we can select now select the other objects in the scene okay and I think that's going to do it for this one okay so let's take a look at the mesh selection methods in blender and the first thing to point out is the difference between the 3d view header when we're in object mode which is the current mode and when we switch to edit mode so I can just switch to edit mode down here okay and you can see a couple of different options become available once we're in edit mode okay and they include the mesh selection methods so we have vertex edge and face and you can just switch between them down here okay you can also press control tab and that brings up the mesh selection mode you can switch between the three so let's take a look at these so if I just select vertex and I zoom in here to the mesh every mesh in blender consists of the three structures okay so vertices edges and faces and this is a vertex so if I left selected these corner dots and they're slightly highlighted okay so you can select one and you can manipulate it okay the second structure is an edge and if I press control tab I can choose the mesh selection mode to be edge so if I select edge and if I select an edge on the cube and an edge is a second structure of a mesh and it connects two vertices by a straight line okay you can select edges and again you can manipulate them in a similar way to vertices you can also rotate them okay so R for rotation you can press G and just move them into different positions depending on what you're doing and the third structure is a face okay and again I can come down here to the mesh selection and choose face okay and a face is basically what forms an object if a mesh didn't have a face it would just render transparent faces consist of at least three sides and these are called tries in the case of this cube it has four sides and they're called quads and if it has more than four edges it's called an n-gon okay and like I said you can select these the very same way as an edge and you can manipulate them in much the same way so you can move them rotate them etc you can also press delete and delete faces okay okay it takes a little bit of getting used to if you're new to blender but just get used to switching between the selection methods okay so vertices edges faces and the fastest way is probably the shortcut key of control tab Okay, you're constantly switching between the three of these options okay and that's basically 
the mesh selection methods. Okay, and that's going to do it for this one. Hi, and welcome to lecture two. So in this one, what we're going to do is add some modeling images that I created in GIMP. And we're going to use these to form our character in 3D. So we're effectively going to begin with a 2D plane, rotate it and position it. And we're going to begin at the character's head. And we're going to be using two views. So we're going to be using front view and side view. And it gives us a better perspective of the shape of the character's face. Now this is a, it's not complicated, but it takes a little bit of getting used to. And I'd recommend practicing this, going back over this, because it can be a little bit frustrating if you're not too familiar with Blender. And that's why in the last lecture, I was talking about maybe gaining a basic understanding of Blender and the interface before you move on to this course. But again, it's not overly difficult, just follow along. I think I carefully cover every piece of the process. So you shouldn't be, you shouldn't get lost. You just have to replay the video a few times maybe to achieve the same results that I do on screen. Okay, and with that, we're gonna pick this up from where we left off in the last one. Okay, I'm just gonna press N to get rid of this property panel and I'm going to press T to get rid of this one. Okay, I don't need this default cube, so I'm just going to press delete and delete that. I'm going to press one and go into front view. I'm going to press five and that brings me into orthographic. As you can see up here, it says front orthographic. If I press five again, it brings me to perspective. So with five, you can toggle between orthographic and perspective. Mostly I'll be using orthographic so you can keep an eye on what mode you're in up here. Again, the most used numbers for views are one for front view, three for side view and seven for top view. So I'm just going to press one again. And I'm just going to press and hold the middle mouse button and shift and just pan up. I'm just going to add a plane to the center of the grid. So it's a good idea maybe to put your cursor in center. So press shift S and left select cursor to center. Okay, I'm going to bring back up this property panel over here by pressing N. And first, I just want to add some background images. So if you come over here to background images, put a check mark beside that. I'm just going to expand this and where it says add image, I'm just going to left click add image. I'm going to come down here and left click open. Okay, I'm going to go to where my images are for this tutorial and I'm going to left click the first one and come up here and open image okay and that pops in an image into the background and if i just press and hold the middle mouse button you see that disappears it's only viewable from either the front view the side view the top view and that's i'm just going to pull this out slightly just so you can see and that's determined by this little box here so Currently it says all views. If I left click in here, I can just designate the front view only. So if I left click front, this picture will only be seen from the front view. So now if I press three, you can't see it. Or if I press seven for top view, it's only when I press one for front or the graphic. So if I toggle between perspective, you can't see it. So it only works in front or the graphic. Okay. Now I'm just going to come back over here and minimize this for a minute. I want to add another image, so I'm going to left click and I'm going to come down here to the second set of properties and left click open. Again, I'm going to pick, choose the folder my pictures are in and you can change the display settings here by just clicking this guy here and I'm going to left click side view and left select open okay as you can see it's coming in on the front view i want this on the the right view so i'm going to come over here to where it says all views left click 
and left select 